Hello, students. This is your science teacher, Mr. Pierce. My apologies. I cannot be with you right now. I have other responsibilities that I need to take care of. Nevertheless, I shall teach you indirectly through a video prepared by me, Mr. Pierce. So, probably going to take some notes today. As always, I recommend that you uh, fill up, or not fill up, but set up your notes Cornell style and uh, probably want to title your notes Responses to the Environment. We're going to continue talking about plants and see how growth occurs in response to different stimuli in their environment. First off, yesterday we set up the corn kernel, and I realized that I spelled kernel wrong in the title, growth experiment. From there, you should have formed three hypotheses based on which way the corn kernel was going to grow as a sprout. Then you also drew a predicted pattern of how the growth would go from the germ in the middle of the monocot seed outward. So, let's talk about responses to the environment. As you recall, in the beginning of the school year, we talked about how we define living things. We referred to the use of Dr. Hugs. All living things have DNA. If you want to follow along and say it with me, you may. The R stands for all living things reproduce. The H stands for all living things have cells. The U stands for all living things use energy. The G stands for all living things grow and develop. And the final thing, the S of Dr. Hugs stands for all living things sense and respond to stimuli. We're going to focus on the sensing and responding to different stimuli in the environment. So, how plants respond to growth in the environment. So, just to start off, what happens when you get really cold? You can answer impromptu off the cuff. I will allow pause for you to answer. So, what happens when you get really cold? Perhaps a lot of things include shivering, trying to make your body and your arms and legs closer together. Goosebumps is a response to sensing the stimulus of cold. Uh, chattering of the teeth. Those are all adequate responses. So what happens is your skin sends a, sig or your skin sends a signal to your brain telling you that it is cold outside. Your brain sends a signal back to do some response. The stimulus is the temperature. If you want to write down the word stimulus in your notes, I recommend it. A stimulus is something in the environment that causes a reaction or a response to the organism. If you ever need the video to be paused, please ask the instructor to pause the video. Instructor, please pause the video whenever the students ask. Thank you. An example, you walk outside, it is very, very hot. Your body begins to sweat in order to cool down. What is the stimulus? You should have said the heat or the hot temperature. What is the organism response? You should have said sweating. Responding to environmental factors of plants. 
Plants respond to environmental stimuli, for example, light, gravity, and the plants will grow in a specific direction according to where the light stimulus is coming from or the gravitational stimulus is coming from. Typically, light stimuli are above the plant. Gravity always works the same direction. downward. I would write down this definition. A tropism is a growth of a plant in response to a stimulus. A positive tropism is growing toward the stimulus. Therefore, a negative tropism is you guessed it, growth away from a stimulus. So, I am encouraging conversation between you and your shoulder partner. Find the fib. In other words, which one of these statements is not true? Is it A, positive tropism is a growth toward a stimulus? B, Negative tropism is a growth toward a stimulus. C. Negative tropism is a growth away from a stimulus. The fib or the false answer is B. Negative tropism is a growth toward a stimulus. Sensing light. When plants grow in response to light, we use the Greek root word photo, which means light. So, phototropism is a change in growth caused by light. This occurs when the cells on one side of the stem will grow longer or larger than other cells. If we look at this image, we have zoomed in and there is a drawing showing you that the plant cells on the left of the image are longer than those on the right of the plant, thus causing the plant to grow in the direction of the light source. The more light the plant gets, what will occur more? You should have said photosynthesis. We're going to watch a video. What is going to happen is every time that the video breaks or pauses, and you will notice, the light source will change and the plant will grow in response to it. As you are watching this, I want you to think, is this a positive or a negative tropism? The light change is showing you the direction of the plant as it is growing. Light change direction again. Change direction. Change direction. Change direction. Change direction. Change direction. Change direction. Change direction.
Those are the materials that the student used. So what happened was a picture was taken every two minutes. The light was switched on opposite sides once before the student went to school and once before bedtime. Pictures were taken every two minutes for eight days. A total of 4,622 pictures were taken. So in other words, this was sped up. Each second is equivalent to approximately two hours. Plants growing in response to light is what? Good. Thank you, Cameron Wright, you third grader. So, you and your shoulder partner should have discussed phototropism. Is it a positive or is it a negative tropism? If you answered positive, you are correct. Now, you are going to find the fact. Phototropism is a change in growth due to gravity. B. Phototropism is something in the environment that causes a reaction or a response. Or C. Phototropism is a change in growth caused by light. The correct answer is C. Phototropism is a change in growth caused by light. Now we are going to talk about growth in response to gravity. You will hear both terms used intertwined. Geotropism or gravitotropism. Gravitotropism is growth of a plant direction due to gravity. I recommend you write that down. There is growth by the roots as well as the shoots. You will notice this flower pot has been knocked over and the plant has changed direction due to the growth. What happens is the shoots and the stems have negative geotropism or gravitotropism where the plants grow away or in the opposite direction of gravity. Here is a picture I took in the Grand Canyon of a tree that grew out of the side of the canyon wall and then upward. The roots have positive geotropism where the roots grow toward the direction of gravity. This is why on mountains trees do not grow perpendicular to the mountain. They always grow upward because of the way that gravity pulls them downward toward Earth's coal core. Here is another video. This one is much shorter. Here we have a plant sitting upright in a pot. When the pot gets turned over, the plants, the shoots and stems, will grow in response to the gravity. In case you missed it, One more time. Again, this was not filmed in real time. The images were put together and sped up. All right, I have run out of time for this video. Please continue to the next video to learn more about tropisms. This has been Mr. Pierce from room 205. Goodbye.